Tonight on the House of Tiny Tearaways. Emotions run high for Emma Partridge. There's the arrival of some new faces. And the return of some old ones. I feel like he's going come here today and he's going to sit and mourn about me. Hello and welcome back to the all new house of Tiny Terraways. We're about to welcome two brand new families into the house. The Partridge family are still in there but they've made fantastic headway and are about ready to leave. But what will little Kai think of new kids invading his patch? What? Shut <laughs> When relationships are at breaking point. Oh, I love my little girl so much. It's something you really hate her dad. Young families are on the edge. And the kids are out of control. Stupid. This is where they come, the house of tiny tearaways. Two of the country's leading child psychologists, Laverne Antrobus and Elizabeth Kilby, are on hand to provide intensive therapy. They will observe how these young parents operate and then intervene to help them turn their lives around. I just can't cope with it. All the parents coming into the house over this month long TV event are hoping that Laverne and Elizabeth can make a real difference to their lives. But whether they can yeah. remains yeah. to be seen. Naughty, naughty daddy. <laughs> 21-year-old single mum Emma Partridge came to the house four days ago with three-year-old Kai and one-year-old Cleo. At home, Kai makes Cleo's life a misery and Emma is scared that this aggressive streak may one day see him seriously hurting his sister. <gasps> Get out. Elizabeth has noticed that Cleo's clinginess is making Kai even more jealous of his sister and she's been teaching Emma to give her children equal attention. Oh, well done. And though Kai's still prone to the odd spell in the time-out pen, there's a much happier mum and son relationship. <laughs> well done, come. It's nearly two o'clock and as Cleo has her afternoon nap, Emma is taking the chance to spend some quality time with her three-year-old son, Kai. I'm going to come and eat you for my dinner. No! Roast Kai. <laughs> Kai and <laughs> Oh, you get me off my bike? I have to get you off the bike. Yes, and eat me on the table. Right now, I I'm going to eat this boy for dinner. Right, I'm going to have this arm for my lunch. <laughs> this leg. A lovely leg for my tea. <laughs> for the last few hours, the partridges have had the place to themselves, but with two new families arriving, things are about to change. So, the Burns family they've got Lennon, who's four, and Sky, who's three, who are safe to say ruling the roost. Let's have a look. This home in Merseyside is far from peaceful, as 22-year-old Melissa Griffiths and 25-year-old Gareth Burns are having their lives torn to pieces by four-year-old Lennon and three-year-old Skye. This mother's dream wedding has been postponed for the foreseeable future as a result of her children's behaviour. I just can't stop looking at the because it, it could have been like me in September, but unfortunately it's not. Get in now! Lenny! He kicked, he punched, he swear. They'll be playing nice and don't ruin them for the ties and then something will go wrong and then a like, ninja turf will get thrown at someone's head. I've had a few be like, bruises on my arms and that where they hit me and that. They just both have mad tantrums all the time. Just, he just wants to start, you can't stop them until you give in to them. It's all nightmare. It's not all the words, buddy. It's just a nightmare. It's very hard for me for not to swear because I'm that angry with them. Can you just shut up? You're not funny. The stress of being left with the children all day has led to Melissa taking her frustrations out on partner Gareth. When Gareth comes in, it upsets me because he just basically gets, lets them get every, whatever they want. Just for like, have an easy day because he's had an hard day at work. Just that on at me all the time. Um, can't get a decent conversation out of her. She's just in a mood because the kids have been playing up for her all day. Mom, no. 
After a five-year engagement, last year Gareth set the date for them to marry. But with family life on a knife age, he decided to call off the imminent wedding. I thought if it, we're going to get married, then it's just going to be the same, if not worse. So I just said to her like one day, I said, we'll have, I think we'll have Carly you know? So I'll postpone it for the time being. The day doesn't go by where I just don't think about this wedding. My dress is actually up my mum's, and when I go up my mum's, I just can't stop going in the bedroom looking at my dress, thinking, like, I could have wore this on September. <coughs> if the behaviour isn't going to get better, then Mel's going to get worse, and if it gets worse, then I'll, I'll probably won't stay around for it. But if the kids carry on and it comes to an end, it it just break our hearts, both of us. Um, oh my goodness. I mean, there are so many elements. What are first your, your feelings about them? It's a pretty it's, yeah, big problem, it's a, isn't it? Full-on mm, yeah. family issues going on for parents, for children. But, you know, hearing at the top, we were going to get married, we have this long engagement, and then he calls the wedding off. I, re I don't like that. I don't, it's left me feeling sort of quite cold, this sort of thing that's hanging over. Melissa. These two children look like quite a handful, don't they? I mean, I just felt complete despair watching that. Yeah. There was just no sense of mum having any control or any kind of management over the day. And I think the despair that I felt was actually nobody's taking charge, nobody's yeah. taking responsibility, and these kids are spiralling faster and faster out of control. Hiya. Hello. Hiya. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. 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 You're right. Hiya. Hello, I'm Emma. This is Kai and Cleo right. is somewhere over there. Hiya. I'm Melissa, this is Gaz, this is Lennon, and this is the guy. The Burns have been in the house for 15 minutes and Lennon and Skye have quickly befriended veteran Kai Partridge. Laverne comes in to introduce herself to the family. Hello, who are you? What's your name? Lennon. Lennon, I'm Laverne. Hello Lennon, nice to meet you. You are? What's your name? Skye. Hello Skye, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Laverne. Hi, I'm Melissa. Hi, yeah. Gaz. Gaz. Yes? Yeah. Well, welcome. Right, Kai. Got some new people to play with. <laughs> At the moment, yeah. they are being very well behaved, yeah. which, <laughs> you know, is probably a reaction to just being here and having yeah. to take it all in. Yeah. Yeah. But on the whole, I just want you to have your, the rest of your day as you would normally yeah. have. Right. I know where some of the bits are that I need to look out for, so I'm going to be looking at your dinner time. Right. Yeah, and I'll yeah. be looking at bedtime, and then tomorrow we'll meet and have a proper chat right. about what I've seen, what I've noticed, and also really where your heads are in yeah. terms of how we go forward. Okay, look, I'll let you get on right. Right. Off, yeah. and keep yeah. acclimatising. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice to meet you. After having spent four days in the house, 21-year-old Emma Partridge has been learning to let go of Cleo and pay more attention to Kai. Elizabeth feels that they're almost ready to leave, but wants to make sure that Emma realises just how far she's come. I have seen some really amazing changes in you and Kai and Cleo. And I, when, I, when I see you do something really well, I was really surprised to hear you say to me, it's not me, it was the house or it was magic, or it was the work that I've done. Emma, the changes that you've made in this house are, are down to you. And I, and, and I sense that you struggle to take credit for that. Yeah. Because when things go wrong, and I was saying they haven't had a chance to build their relationship, which kind of seemed obvious, really, because you've kept them apart for a good reason, you said to me, can you remember what you said to me? It was my fault. It's your fault. So you take blame for the bad things, and you don't take credit for the good things. Mm. When you get a chance to play with Kai, you are so good at that. I mean, this, the work that I have done with you has been about bringing your children together. It's not been about how you parent, because I've not had to pick you up on that, because that is really excellent. Emma, do you believe me? <laughs> I can tell on your face. Why don't you believe me? I don't know. You don't believe you're a good mum? No. Tell me why you don't think you're a good mum. I don't know, I just feel like my kids are unhappy all the time. Why do you think they're unhappy? I don't know. I just do. 
Are you happy or unhappy? Unhappy. Unhappy. Why do you think you're unhappy? I don't know. Found my box of boxes for you. Thank you. Why do you think you're unhappy? Because I feel my kids are. That's why I'm unhappy. Do you think that sometimes your children know that you're not always happy? Yeah. And what are they like when you're unhappy? Not very nice. No. They get unhappy and they get worried. Yeah. Kai gets worried, he gets aggressive. And at times I have seen you, when you are happy and when you are working with the children, then I have seen the change in your children. How have you felt in yourself since you've been in the house? I suppose I have been happier than what I normally am because I've seen Kai really happy. You've been happier, he's been happier, yeah? And what I've seen here today and for the rest of the week is that the successes that you have made are down to the work that you have done. I want you to believe that. If I, if I can get one thing out of you having been in the house with your children is that you will leave here knowing just what a good job you have done and just how much you need to take credit and be proud of yourself. The Burns are playing in the living room. Elizabeth and Laverne want them to act as they would at home so that they can get an idea of what family life is like. Yeah, same what can build. What's that? A gun. So that won't be better than my gun now. Watch this. I'm Ugh. gonna make a gun. Look, yeah, look at that. That's Power Rangers Mystic Force gun. <laughs> but man's more powerful though. Oh. Ah, he's just felt pieces. Man is better than yours. No, it's not. And you got this gun? Oh, that's a good one. Oh. What's that? It's not a gun. Oh. That's like a rocket launcher, oh. isn't it? Like a bazooka. Oh. Daddy, I'll make you better go. Oh, I like that. Hey, that's a good one, that. Another family coming into the house are the Morgans. Now, stepson, who is also called Morgan, has been totally put to one side by the two younger children. Let's have a look. Sometimes the ferocity is overwhelming That's it's just dangerous. screaming screaming That's screaming yell 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 and they're like yeah! meet the morgans 26 year old stacy 25 year old paul a nine year old morgan Searle, stacy's son from a previous relationship stepson morgan has been pushed out of family life since the arrival of hellraisers three-year-old maddox and two-year-old leisha <laughs> We leave them on their own in a room. They'll fight, kick, pinch, punch, headbutt, anything you can think of. Funny, it's naughty. Well, they're not fighting with each other, they just destroy the house. The chaotic household is having a negative effect on Morgan's well being. He's missing out on so much, like quality time with us and doing the things he wants. He's up in his room trying to get away from them all the time in his bedroom. I don't think he's ever going to be close to him. I think he thinks it's us and then him. I don't think he feels he fits in quite as much as he should. I do understand that, you know, they can't really do much with me because they're usually busy with Lily and Maddie. A committed mum since the age of 16, Stacey no, has devoted her life sweet. to her children. But the lack of discipline at home has resulted in her feeling invisible within her own family. I do try and tell them that I'm the boss. I'm your mum, you've got to listen to me. They say, no, I'm the boss, and laugh at me. They just don't listen to a word I say. Stacey's confidence with the kids is really low across the board. She's, she's got no confidence with them at all. The unruly household means family life, as they know it, is in tatters. I normally end up looking myself in the bathroom and crying my eyes out on the floor, because I can't take it anymore. I've wanted to walk out quite a few times, but more and more recently. It's, it's getting really hard lately. You're supposed to enjoy getting up, playing with them, going out. We're just living. We're just 
fight them through each day, wait until they go to bed, and then start it all again the next day. We can't carry on like that. It's no good for anyone. It's very tough, isn't it, for Stacey and Paul, but they obviously care so much. Number one, about Morgan being excluded and the behaviour of these two little ones, Maddox and Leisha. What are you going to do with them? Well, there's a lot there, wasn't yeah. there? I mean, really watching that, you could get a sense of a couple who are really struggling. Yeah. And there's a lot of emotion, a lot of sadness with Mum. Yeah. And you're right, we've got Morgan really on the fringes. And, I mean, what an articulate and really oh. insightful little boy to say, Oh, I understand, and it's not their fault, and and I just have to get on with it by myself. I mean, mind blowing, really. Yeah, I'm worried that he's given them permission actually oh. to leave him out because he's so considered in his response, isn't he? And actually, listening to him, I was thinking, okay, okay, that makes no, it doesn't make any sense, yeah, yeah. you know. And I just wonder how much the parents have fallen into that trap of thinking he's all right. Bring them into this house because I want him to go. Hello, I'm here. And actually, yes, I am missing out on a lot, and I do need you. Let's talk about Leisha and Maddox. The behaviour is, we saw it, there's punching, kicking, they bruise each other. You know, poor mum is going, uh, I'm the boss. They laugh, obviously, in her face. If you're going to be the boss, you've got to act the boss, you've got to live it. You've got to somehow convey that to the children. At the moment, there's just something very passive, almost quite destroyed about this mum, that actually we need to get hold of her and very quickly say, if you want to be the boss, let's get you in that position. It's half past four and the last family to enter the house are Paul and Stacey Morgan with their three kids, Morgan, Maddox and Leisha. I'm Stacey, this is Paul, this is Morgan, Maddie and Lily. I'm just going to go outside and explore the grounds, I think, if that's OK with you. Just going to go have a quick run around, get used to the surroundings. See you all later. Excited by this new adventure, nine-year-old Morgan is looking for someone to share it with. Is anybody going to play with me? Wow. Right, OK, I'll play on my own now. There we are. I'm off. I'm rising. Oh, that's so nice. I don't need no stopping. OK. We're firing <laughs> After having been in the house for three hours, the honeymoon's over for the Burns family. Gareth and Melissa are here to sort Stop out it. Sky and Lennon's Sit bad behaviour. Sit up. <laughs> Sit up. <laughs> Sit up. <laughs> now behave. Now. You're getting tired. If you're getting tired, you can have something to eat, you can have a bath, and then you can go to bed. <laughs> pick, pick that up. No. Pick it up. No. Pick it up. No. Now. No. Pick, it it up. pick it up. No. Pick it up. No. Now. Pick it up. No. Pick it up. No. Don't mess. Pick it up. No. Don't smack. No. Pick it up. Now. I'll give you three. One. No. Two. No. Pick it up. No. Get up. No. I'll see you again. One. You're having it in a bit, mate. Mummy's <laughs> making Two. it now. Pick it up and put it on there. Good lad. Three. Now. <laughs> right. You're not going As one of the rules of the house is no smacking, Elizabeth decides to reiterate some ground rules to Melissa. <laughs> so I've been able to watch how things have been going. <laughs> and I saw you get into a bit of a a bit of a tussle, a bit of a row with Sky. Can yep. you tell me what happened there? Um she was like taking a little tantrum. Mm -hmm. Which she usually does. What I saw was you giving her a, a tap or a yep. smack on the bottom. Yep. And I understand that you felt you needed to do something, but I want to be very clear with you that there can be no smacking in the house at all. Because no matter how frustrated you get, or even if you've threatened it and you then feel like you have to carry it through, we want to be very clear that there can't be any smacking. And I want you to try and think about how you move her and handle her, because I'm aware of a lot of dragging, a lot of pulling, and you need to be very careful with that, OK? Yes. Yep. With the telling off over, Elizabeth goes over to greet the Morgans. Hello. Hello. Having introduced herself, she wants to find out a bit more about family life. Something that would be really helpful for me to be thinking about is if you could describe to me, you know, what the problems are, where you're at at the moment. Brothers and sisters fighting. 
Maddox. Maddox and Leisha. Yeah. Fighting constantly. Can't be left alone for fighting. Is she ignoring from me? They ignore. Yeah. They, they ignore you? They, everybody. Yeah, everybody. They, they, you, you ask them to do something. You, you don't even have to tell them off. If you're just speaking to them normally, they, they totally ignore you. Morgan, what's it like for you at home? Well, I don't spend much time at home because I get, do go to school quite often, so I don't really get to see that much of them. But when I do come home, you know, there is quite a bit of tension. And do they fight with you? Will they be naughty with you? Yes. And will they hit you? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah? Do you feel in control at all? No, I don't. You don't? Paul, do you feel in control? I can control them, yeah, a, a little bit, not not completely, but I do feel that I've got some control over them, uh, but that does involve shouting at them. Right. So if you get really aggressive and up the ante, you can get some control then? Yeah. But otherwise, no. And Stacey, so you don't feel like you can get any control at all? No, I'm too soft. Right. So let me get this straight. When, Paul, you do try and get control, and you do that by shouting because that's all you feel you've got left now, you then try and step in and protect the children? Yeah, and take them away. So you guys are, are completely separated in what you're doing? Yeah, completely separate. Yeah, we've got two... We're, we're poles apart with the whole discipline thing. So you're actually working completely against each other with this? Yeah. Right, well, that's incredibly helpful for me to know. I, I want to see how this relationship works. I want to see you trying to take charge in any way you can. And if that's by using your voice and shouting and that's what you do at home, that's what I want to see. And I want to see you reacting how you would normally react. This has got to be, this is your opportunity to show me what you do at home. It's late afternoon. As the Burns and Morgans are beginning their journeys, Emma Partridge is almost coming to the end of hers. Over the last few days, Emma has been told to do things that involve both Kai and Cleo. So when Kai wants a story read, Emma remembers the advice. Can we bring Cleo up to read him with us? Yeah. We put a. Uh, you sit next to Mummy this side, and I've clear that side. That's not my dinosaur. Its body's too squishy. You press it too, Kai. Well done. That's not my dinosaur. Its tail is too fuzzy. Feel that, Cleo? Ooh. Gareth Burns is also playing with his kids, but in his own slightly different way. I want me That's not mine. Run away, I've just made it. I made you a boxing gun. A boxing gun? Yeah. Oh, I want to try that. I've never seen one of them. I'll try one. I've heard of a Tommy gun and a, something like an MK47 or something. Let me open it then, Cleo. Well done. This is nice, isn't it? When you should read that now. OK. Every castle has a king, a queen, a prince and a princess. And it. Knuckle duster. <laughs> Look at that, mate. That'll do some damage. That knuckle wrist? That is good. Do you want to try my knuckle duster? Yeah. Don't, don't break it. I won't. Put your hand through it. That's it. Ba -ba. <laughs> That's a cracker, that one. Dad. <laughs> it's eight o'clock, and upstairs the Morgans are getting Maddox and Leisha ready for bed. Thank you. When you're in bed, you've got to stay in bed. Susie's hungry and bored with nothing to do. She pulls and pulls on the rope until she is free. Daddy's coming in in a minute. Next door, Emma Partridge is putting Kai to sleep for the last night in the house. On their first night here, he refused to stay in his bed. Thanks to lessons in positive praise, four days later, bedtimes are a lot calmer. Lay down. I like to stay Lay down. down, please. Very good boy. Thank you for listening. Half an hour after their lesson in getting the most out of your homemade knuckle duster, four-year-old Lennon and three-year-old Skye are tucked up in bed. Dad Gareth is soothing them to sleep with a bedtime story. It's about a young lad called Luke Skywalker. It's Guy. <laughs> yeah, pretends it was you. Right. So there was a little girl called Sky Skywalker. What? I mean Sky Boom. Right then, well, there was a little girl. You've just spoilt the atmosphere at Story now. Dad. 
a long, long time ago in a galaxy far away. There won't be anybody called Sky Burns though, would there? Yeah. Right, I'll have to tell the turtles one there. One day, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello and Raphael were walking through the sewers. They saw these um, ninjas coming towards them. So Michelangelo pulled his nunchakers out and like wrapped one, round one of the ninjas' legs and like pulled them up at her so they fell on their head. At the end of the tunnel was a um, shredder. Nah, go to sleep. Who was the turtle's arch enemy? Are sleep. Shredder was the turtle's arch enemy, and um, drink it nice. They all ended up fighting with Shredder. They all battered him. They all lived happily ever after. <laughs> Despite having only been in the house for a few hours, Gareth Burns has got reservations. Well, I am a bit of a sceptic about coming here. I don't, I don't know if I like somebody telling me what to do with my kids. And if I can stick in a routine by doing it when I get home and stuff. Because it's a different life down my end. It's a new day in the house of tiny tearaways and the partridges are the first up. Oh no. But it's not the best start to the day for Cleo. <laughs> Having been shown how to master the perfect time out, Emma's been given plenty of opportunities to practice, though they aren't quite as frequent as when they first arrived. You've done a minute, time up to finish. You're putting there because you pushed your sister. No, you don't push your sister. Now, what do you say to her? Sorry. Don't do it again, please. Hello. Since yesterday afternoon, the Burns and the Morgans have entered the house and been going about their normal routines for Elizabeth and Laverne. The observations are now over and the work is about to begin. There'll be some home truths. If you fill your children's heads with this sort of games, where, do, where does it stop for them? Chaos in the garden. <laughs> and after two weeks, David and Sammy Butters are back. But have things changed? He's even made a commitment. He got my name tattooed on his wedding finger. <laughs> it's 8.30 and everybody's up and about. While some are still half asleep, others are raring to go. You'll go straight and smash into that fence in a minute, won't you? Eric goes! Watch him. <laughs> As the Burns and Morgans only arrived yesterday, they're still being watched by Elizabeth and Laverne, who want to see the kids' behaviour firsthand. And it isn't long before three year old Maddox Morgan's temper gets the better of him. Stop it. No. No, no Maddie, you're going to have to sit no. over there if you're not going to be nice Mommy. to me. No. Mommy. Go on, over there. Mommy. If you won't slump... <laughs> That's not my dinosaur. Its tail is too fuzzy. <laughs> oh, they're horrid. That's not my dinosaur. Its body is too squishy. Stop crying and sit up. I don't want to get up. Then I'm not going to turn the book round just for you because Lily's sitting nicely, so she gets to listen to it properly. It's 9:20, and Laverne decides it's time for a chat with Gareth and Melissa. So they're real ter tearaways then. They, they, yeah, they can be quite wild yeah. in their behaviour. Yeah. At home, it's aggress sort of aggression towards each other and fighting. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Outside, it's a sort of free for all. Yeah. 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 And and you as parents, how do how do you manage? I find it very hard. Mm -hmm. um, I've gone through depression over it, mm -hmm. um, and it's caused arguments between us and stuff like that. And this has gone one stage further in terms of how it's had an effect on your relationship because you two were due to be married. Yeah. Mm. And tell me a little bit about why that's not going to happen. I just thought, well, if if we get married, it's just going to get worse, really. You know, it's not going to make out better, like mm -hmm. just because we've got married. So I just said, like, just call it off for this year. Mm -hmm. That's quite a big statement, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it had to be done, though. I've really had to be done. Coming back just to your parenting, before I come on to tell you what I've started to notice, I just wanted to get an idea from you both about what you thought it would be like to be parents. A lot easier than what it is. What yeah. did you think your children would be like? What sort of picture did you have? Something like out of the Waltons or something. Do <laughs> 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 <Just like, laughs> you know, I, I wasn't expecting you to say that, OK. Just a nice family, like, where uh, there's no arguing, no fighting, okay. all the kids, like, help each other and stuff. All right, I've got some um, footage to show you, just oh. how they have been over the last few hours, or well, yesterday. Let's have a look. <laughs> Knuckle duster. Lenin. Lenin. Knuckle duster. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, you made oh, that. Told you. That is good. Do you want to try my knuckle duster? Yeah. Don't, don't break it. That's it. Ba <laughs> ba. Pop it down. Guys, you probably know what I'm going to say because I'm, I'm not quite sure which part of the Waltons that was. Mm. I don't think that influences the violence at all. No. Okay, I, I haven't said anything about that, mm. but it just seemed rather strange your image mm. of what family yeah. life might be like, and then mm. seeing the sort of games that you were, you were playing with them. That's what they do when they're at home, because oh. they've got mm. toy guns and mm. you know just what make funny noises and stuff like that. Mm. So it's just what they play at home. But is it something that you feel is acceptable? As long as they're not real ones, like, you know what I mean? They're, 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 yeah, they're happy okay. doing that. OK. Yeah. I have to say I, I'm quite shocked mm. at that response because, yeah. actually, I don't think it's yeah. the sort of thing that I would be wanting young children to feel is the at the front of their mind in terms of the creative games that they're mm. playing. You know, if yeah. you fill your children's head with this sort of image and right. this, these sorts yeah. of games, where, do, where does it stop for them? Mm. You know, perhaps we've touched on things this morning that start you thinking differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because this mm. is all about whether or not, as parents, you are able to open your minds up to yes. thinking in a different way. Yeah. Nice guy. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Good girl. Hey, what have you been doing? Playing. You've been playing. Yeah, I was learning. Miss me? Yeah. I've been in another room talking to a lady. Elizabeth has asked Emma Partridge to take a family picture before they leave the house for a final task, which she'll reveal to them later on. Right, you ready? You got a look at the camera? Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Nice smile. It's a busy day for Laverne as she calls in the second family of the day for their first yeah, consultation. Okay. Paul and Stacey have come to the house because of divides within the family. Nine-year-old Morgan feels isolated from the others, and youngest kids, Maddox and Leisha, are out of control, leaving Paul and Stacey unable to cope. Who'd like to give me an idea of what the issues are that you're facing. Mainly the fighting and the, and the lack of respect and not under, listening to us at all. Yeah, I think, well, especially for you, you need to get, um, just try and get some control over them, really. Mm -hmm. it's, they, they didn't listen or do anything you say, really. And for you, Paul, is it different? It is different, yeah. I mean, I do... I do shout at them a bit, don't I? And do you expect to always have to shout? Why don't I always shout? I'm going to put them on a naughty step, don't I? But you, you don't like doing it, do you? No. No. 
<laughs> Why is that then, Stacey? Um, I don't know. I, I don't want to hate me, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And because I haven't got the guts to sort of stand there and be big and angry. I'm not an angry person, really. OK. Well, I'd rather be their friend. And it's just interesting, as, as Paul was talking about, you know, what he does, I was getting a sense from you, actually, this didn't fit comfortably with you. No. No. Why was, I, why no. was I getting that feeling? Well, because he scares me when he does it, so okay. the kids must be scared as well, I think. Okay. It just reminds me of when I was younger, and I don't want them growing up like I did. Right. I mean, it, it feels that natural for me to ask, or, you know, what it reminds you of, Stacey? If, um, I was bullied a, lot, bullied a lot at school and by my brother at home, my older brother, and my dad didn't want me either, so... Right. With the kids, I don't want them to sort of think that they're not wanted, so mm. that's probably why I put a lot into it. Mm. And then I don't like all the angry and the shouting, because it reminds me of what my brother used to do to me. And, Paul, did you, do you know this? Part yeah. Stacey's history. Yeah, I, I know a lot of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Your tissue doll. There we go. Thank you. So it's something that we need to think about together then. And so thinking about your children and this protection zone, Stacey, that you want to have around them, I can completely understand where it comes from but it's not making you happy. Yeah. They're just out of control and I don't want them um, to end up having as both by the time they're 10. Mm. Morgan, when he, he's good as gold, it's mainly the little two ones, because mm -hmm. they haven't got quality time with us enough. Mm -hmm. And Morgan's lost that as well. And what is your relationship like with him? With Morgan? Mm. I, just, I find it really difficult with Morgan, to be honest. Right. I, and that's my problem, I think, because... That's, that's everybody's problem with him. Because he's so advanced. He's, he's brainier than me. No, he, he really is really he, his, his vocabulary is better than mine. Right. And he goes into a massive, long, deep subjects. You can talk... You, you could go and have a conversation mm -hmm. with him about Bin Laden and Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he gets it from, but he knows more than me about world affairs. It's, so how does that make you feel? I just find it really, really difficult to find a common ground. And speak to him about something. I can hear from what you're saying that you're, you're like this, you two, aren't you? You're trying every which way to keep everybody up in the air. And actually, I yeah. think we need to do some work to try and keep you two yeah. solid so that you can have the relationship that you need to have in order that you can then go, OK, we're ready. We're ready to look after these children. OK? Yeah. <laughs> OK, I'll let you go back to that. Thank Thanks. you. Where's it to work? <laughs> Take the makeup. Hi, baby. I love you. I love you. You want to watch me? Hmm? You want to me? You want me, honey? After their consultation, the Burns are back at the building blocks and it looks like Laverne's words have had an effect on Gareth as there's not a weapon in sight. This is going big now. Can you manage one on there? Go on. That's it. That's it. <laughs> put another one on, Kai. Stick another sky. You put him one on top. Go on. That's it. <laughs> I think that's going to make it your lap. When the Morgans arrived yesterday, Elizabeth and Laverne were immediately struck by just how mature nine-year-old Morgan was. Since being here, he's proved himself to be the little adult of the family and has spent all morning looking after the kids. Yeah! You're both going to get hurt again. Look, he said stop. <laughs> no! What are you doing that for? You're hurting. And maybe it's for the best as Kai Partridge is getting himself into some sort of scrape every five minutes. No! See? Yeah. See, you'll get hurt. No, 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 you'll get hurt. My trick, my nose. Yeah, well, if you, can you pull it out? No. 
So I'll get someone. Um, so, sorry, his leg is stuck. I can't, I can't, I can't help him. He's stuck. It's down there. My knee is stuck. Oh no! Wait a minute. Watch out, Sky. Ask his mum there. Um, sorry. Oh, he's all right. We've done it. Oh. He's all right. She told you off for that, didn't she? No, she didn't. Yes, she did. No, she didn't. Having watched Morgan for the last 24 hours, Laverne wants to find out how he feels about the family and their reasons for being there. Tell me how you get on with everybody in your family. Oh, I think I do get on quite well. Um, Let's start with Maddie. I do play with him, but... You know, he does hit me quite a bit and, you know, I don't take that as... I know he doesn't learn that, but it still doesn't seem affection to me. Right. OK. So that's not very nice sometimes. It's a difficult relationship with Maddie. Yeah. Right. Are you a bit upset? Are you a bit upset? Yeah, a little bit, but, hey. What's made you feel a bit upset, darling? I don't know, really. I guess it's just sort of talking up close, as it were. When having to think about it? Hmm. Are you quite a thinker? Do you think about things quite a lot? Yeah, I mean, I think... Well, there's a sort of <laughs> example, but I think I would, yeah. Hmm. But I wonder if what you're saying to me is that, actually, I do think about things quite a lot, but maybe I don't talk about it quite a lot. Yeah, perhaps yeah. that could be a reason. All right, darling. OK. Do you want me to get Mummy? No, I'm fine. You sure? OK. And what about Lily? How would you describe your relationship with her? Well, a bit stronger than Mad is yet, cos she... You know, I haven't been around her as often as Maddie, so she hasn't had time to sort of, mm -hmm. well, get me that much, sort mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. But I think there's still, you know, it's, it's still a bit... not on the amazing side, cos she still sometimes acts like she doesn't want me around every so often. Mm, OK. All right, so sometimes it can feel a bit separate. You know, when I spoke to Mum and Paul, one of the things that they were saying is they are so proud of you. They also feel that it's so important that you all are together, that you really feel that you have a brother and sister that you have a good connection with, and that they can be your parents who you feel very close to. So that makes me feel really good, that actually everybody's thinking exactly the same thing. Laverne decides to bring in Mum Stacey and bring her up to speed on how her son is feeling. I was just chatting with him and asking him, you know, what it was like being in the house and I was just going through different relationships and how he thinks he gets along with people. And really, I, I, I think he suddenly became a little bit overwhelmed, really, um, which is absolutely fine. But I think that for a moment there, what Morgan realised is that he does a lot of thinking about how things are, but maybe he doesn't do a lot of talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. You can talk to me any time, you know you can. You've always got time for your beef. You can make me cry now. <laughs> Pair of numpties, aren't we? What's the matter? Do you feel a bit alone? No. Not Amazingly, but a little bit. How can I make it right? I don't know. What would you like me to do? I really don't know. That's the problem. OK. Maybe we can find out together. OK? We can start now. Are you two looking after each other? For the next couple of minutes, I'm going to leave you in here. 
okay? Because I think we need to focus on that. All right, I'll see you again later. Thank you. Okay. Ten minutes later, they return to Paul, who's been waiting in the living room. I've been, I've been in a consultation room. With who? Why? Quiet room, actually. Quiet room, sorry. Why? The other family's been in a consultation room. Who is? Why? Why, what's wrong? Why, what's wrong? I was looking and he got overwhelmed and started crying. We were both in there blubbing our eyes out. And he's overwhelmed because he feels there's a lot of pressure in the family and that his feelings don't matter. How is Morgan, the nine-year-old? I mean, really sweet. I mean, I was quite surprised in my chat, but he did fall apart when he started to talk about the younger two. And actually, I think he's a very clever boy mm. who does lots of thinking, but doesn't actually put those thoughts and feelings into words. And suddenly, he just was overwhelmed as he thought about, you know, what it's like to have a brother and sister, the distance between them, and actually that he doesn't feel very close to them at times. And, and you know, the problem they brought in, which is yeah. that... They're not a family unit at yeah. the moment. You know what, He's Angie? somewhere on the outside. Good girl. All week, Elizabeth has been trying to unite the partridges so Kai can feel equal to Cleo and his mum's affections. Elizabeth wants to prove to them how far they've come. So, as Cleo takes a nap, Kai and Emma have one more task to do. I've hidden some pieces in the garden and I want you to go and get them, bring them back. Is Mummy going to help? Yes. Should we yes. run? Get a piece? Do it together. Okay. Can you do them one at a time? Run and get back. One. Come on, let's go and get one. What one do you want to get? That one. That one? Run! 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 <laughs> no, come on, quickly get it. Pull it. That's it, bring it back up here. It's a bit of you. It's a bit of me. Bring it back up. <laughs> Look, where are you going? Are you going to fall over? You got it. Well done. Another one? Come. Get them. Go on then, get that one. I'm going to get another one. This one? Yeah. I'm going to. <laughs> That's it, come on. Back to his birth. Got it. I just got it. Well done. Come on. <laughs> You're tired already. <laughs> Got it. Well done. With Kai getting his mum's full attention, he's thrown himself into the task. Well done. There's some more. Good boy. It's, I think it's going to be Cleo. Well done. Are you going to do it? Yes. Can we do it all together? Yes. Yeah. Kai's very good at puzzles. Yeah. yeah. And who goes next to me? I do. Oh, yeah. It's me. It is. It is me. What's that? The... I would like to show you something. How we started yep. when we first came in the house. And I picked this image because I was really struck by how it was you and Cleo together so closely. And we've actually ended with something <laughs> completely different. Yep. And the smile on your face in that picture for me is just... Yeah, and you smiled, you've done your tiger smile. And Kai smiling, and Cleo looking relaxed. Yeah. Hello, Cleo. <laughs> Hello, Cleo. Hello, Hello Kai. Kai. Emma, I'm, I'm just, you know, I wanted to show you that, yeah. just to see the contrast between how things were when you came in and how things are now, and how much, I think, how much the relationships between you have changed. Yeah. Five days ago, 21-year-old Emma came to the house scared that three-year-old son Kai was terrorising his one-year-old sister Cleo. I do think that if he was left in a room with her on his own, I do think he could seriously harm her. There were three things Kai was good at. Getting out of bed, pushing his sister and getting put in time-out. Time-out, time-out, time-out. And Emma seemed sure where the blame lay. The eye. I think the problem is me. But it soon became obvious that Kai was in desperate need of his mum's attention. Cleo spends a lot of time on your hip. And I think part of what Kai gets into is being very cross that she has this closeness yeah. with you. The Be moment off. Emma learnt to give as much time to Kai as she was giving to Cleo, put Cleo down, please. There was a much happier boy. Hey. And one who could share his mum with his sister. It's nice, isn't it? Nice smile. Is that it? Nice smile. 
You got a thing what as the partridges we make the ritual goodbyes, it's time to leave. Having seen the change in Kai, it's a much more hopeful Emma that looks to the future. I think I remember the most how the children can actually play together without Kai hurting Cleo. Bye! See soon. I'm going to my grandma's house. I'm actually feeling quite positive about the future now, the way the children can actually play and be nice to each other. I'm really looking forward to putting everything that Elizabeth told me to work when I get home. Now, do you remember the Butters family? They had triplets, another baby, and then another one or another two on the way. Well, they've come back to tell us how life has been since they left the house. When 21-year-old Sammy and 28-year-old David Butters came to the house two weeks ago, their relationship was on the edge, with David ready to walk out on his family. These last couple of weeks, it's been where I've just wanted to pack my bags and go. I just have Alfie and all of the triplets. The stress of three-year-old triplets, Lewis, Taylor Jean and Lily Sue, was too much for the couple to deal with, and Sammy had postnatal depression after their birth. Bedtimes were a nightmare, and it took hours to get the triplets to sleep. David was left to do most of the parenting, with a pregnant Sammy only interested in looking after four-month-old baby Alfie. Get in there. Lewis, you do this every night. Get into your bed now. After four intensive nights in the house, the butters managed to make headway with bedtime, and Sammy also did her fair share. Her involvement paid off, and she bonded with the triplets, and encouraged by this, promised to make some big changes. I promise to stick to our routine and get up on the morning. They've now come back to the day clinic to tell Elizabeth and Laverne how they've got on. Come on then, tell us. Yeah. The, bed, the bed routines, it's, it's brilliant. They go into bed at what, seven o'clock? And they're down by about eight, sometimes at half seven. Wow. So all really, three at the same time? Yeah. So what do you do now? I don't know, I, I just tend to do it by myself. I put them to bed and I think they're a bit... If Sammy does it, they're not scared of Sammy. Well, they're a bit more scared of me, so... When I first met with you and you were saying we can't get them to sleep, Laverne and I were a bit like, well, you know, it's triplets is going to be tough, but how hard can it be? Mm. And then we had a go <laughs> and learned. Then we experienced it. <laughs> but then it really is hard. It is. But you, hearing you talk now, it's, it's like you understand your children in a completely different yeah. way. You know, you know which each, what each child needs, yeah. you know how to do it, you've got a plan. It is like talking to a completely different family. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing actually to hear what you've achieved. When we've thought about you being in the house, I mean, obviously, we came up against the fact that, you know, David, you felt you did everything and actually you do do a lot. Sammy, we saw you showing us that you were capable of doing much more. Since we got on, we have been sharing, we have doing, doing things together. It's just the bedtime. I feel like he's, we're coming here today and he's going to sit and mourn about me because I don't do it. It's not that I can't do it, it's because, it's, it's because I sit there and I go, oh, God, we should go, we should go right. to sleep. And right. I'm, it's like... David's yeah, and doing... I find that irritating, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Because I can sit and I can be quiet. Yeah. And Sam, I can see her sat there and she's, she's fidgeting. Yeah. She's like, oh, I'm bored. I find that hard, just sitting there and not doing nothing. I mean, what you're saying is what I think we hear from parents again and again and again, that actually the resistance to investing some time in change. Yeah. And, and when you look at it, Sammy, it's not very long. It does, I know. You know, it probably would be the maximum of about a month to crack this and get this sorted. And then you've got the rest of their childhood. But that's only one part of the jigsaw. Mm. The other part being how you feel about allowing each other some space. Mm -hmm. Because you guys are a very intense couple in many ways. You've got four children, soon to be five children. And for this relationship to survive the long term, you've got to invest in the relationship as much as you invest in the children. And part of that is giving each other time apart, time to breathe, but also time together. Yeah? We, yeah, have, we have come a lot closer, haven't we? Mm. He's even made a commitment. He got my name tattooed on his Aww. wedding finger, <laughs> which I'm really proud of. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Only last week, wasn't it? So that's obviously... That's a big thing for David, because okay. he never said he'd get anyone's name tattooed on him. So I feel like he's mine now forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's quite a significant sentence. <laughs> he's mine. I mean, I think, you know, that there is that sense that David is yours and he belongs to you. And also think that you've got to use the space that's opened up in the evenings to talk to each other about this. Because I feel like you've come here today and you're talking to us and you're talking through the various things and almost I can see you unpacking in your minds. Actually, we need to stop doing that. Mm -hmm.
We don't need to do that. Okay, that was good. Oh yeah, I have helped. You two today need to take that away and do it with mm -hmm. each other. You don't need us because actually you are thinking and you are listening to each other. Yeah. And of course you're gonna make mistakes. Every parent makes mistakes absolutely every day. But the next day you try something a bit different. Well, the Partridge family have left, but there is no let up for Elizabeth and Laverne. They've got their hands full with the Burns and the Morgan families. Not only that, there's double trouble to come with two, yes, two sets of twins. <laughs> just come to the point where the kids have come involved in us getting married. How's the swearing? 